You, yeah. You have to be careful because you're going to be shaped into the shape of what you are worshiping. If you worship a stone object, you'll slowly kind of turn into that stone object. You'll turn into whatever pattern you adulate that yeah. will come to engulf all, all of you. And that's easy. You know what heroin looks like, right? Everybody knows what heroin looks like. Everybody knows what, what an alcoholic looks like. They actually, it actually physically transforms you. Like everybody knows what someone, what a prideful person looks like. That's why we have these, that's why you can play it in a movie, right? You can, you can play a prideful person and we'll recognize that. But some people like become that mm -hmm. and you, and it's, and it's changes their face. Like they actually physically become the yeah. thing that they worship. Yeah. Uh, and so, and so it's a, it's a reality. Like the thing that you worship will, like you said, will mold you into its image. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there, there are still patterns that are greater than us that aren't God. There are, there are transcendent modes of being something that greater than thought, uh, you know, greater than feeling that still aren't, aren't God. They're greater than us. They're on the way, mm. maybe, but they can get distracting uh, from us. Do, do you agree with that? I, I've found yeah. that myself. How do you, how do you know what's God and not just yeah, that's tough. something that's greater than you? Well, I, and this, so the idea is that anything like any good is always of limited value. So any good, they like any good you can recognize, even the virtues. And that's okay. tough. That's tough because, you know, um, it's so funny because I was reading this morning, I was reading The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis, a great book, by the way. It's really good. Um, and he was, he was talking about where he was talking about that, where he, he talked about how sometimes uh, like lower passions that seem virtuous at the outset, like let's say the love of your child, like that's a good thing. Like loving your child is a good thing. But because it's such a it's a, it is an actual good, it's it's almost like more dangerous than, let's say, your lust, because lust you like. You give in to lust and you kind of know that it's not good. Like you kind of yeah. know that it's bad for it you. It exhausts you, itself pretty quickly too. Yeah, it kind of, and so you're like, you're in this thing and you kind of know you need to get out. But if you love your child, you can trick yourself into thinking that this love is the is the absolute good. And all the sacrifices you make for the love of your child is good. But the, it actually, it not necessarily, it can reach a limit, right? Where you are going beyond the pale in the love of your child, where you, you're actually trying to like, you know, suck the child into you. You're trying to like devour the child. Um, and so, and so it's harder to awaken from these kind of offset virtues. It's more difficult. It's like mm. you have these images of, of monks, uh, this image of the holy ladder where you see these monks going up a ladder towards God. Uh, and you see like, even that, like that really high up on the ladder, you see these like demons, like pulling them down into yeah. hell. And you realize that, oh man, like you can do everything for pride, like every virtue you can do out of pride. And then it's like the last, it's like the last test, whether huh. or not you're just doing it out of self glory, you know? Huh? Yeah. No, I was just, I was just thinking about that <clears throat> uh, because I expose so much myself through recording myself and publishing it on the internet, which is rather <laughs> exposing. Yeah. And like at, at any moment and constantly, I'm always like one step from falling off and the higher i get the more eyes i achieve the greater my fall will be let's just say the more people will be accusing me of mm. of wrongdoing and i will have to bear that guilt uh, or that shame uh, it it magnifies as as my path becomes successively greater and you know th there's ways of tricking myself out of that but there, there's a reality to that and well what and i was thinking well how do i keep my balance how do i keep my balance and i remembered this dream that i had about 20 years ago I had this conversation with a close friend about heaven and hell, and we were talking about the reality of that. And uh, so I was, I was thinking about that. And then I had this dream that I was actually in hell and everything was pain and suffering. And below me was this brick path. And the only way that I could stay on the path out was to be completely calm and completely relaxed and, and not respond to the pain, not magnify mm. that pain and that suffering and just very humbly, very quietly follow that, that trail out. Um, so, you know, no matter how high you get, you know, th there's like a, like a, an anecdote to pride uh, is, you know, if you say that pride is the ultimate uh, test, you know, like you have to have 
the anecdote embedded in every one of your every one of your patterns, every one mm. of your movements, even between your patterns and the breaths that you take, you need to be constantly uh, remembering that. Yeah, but it's tough. Like for us, like I would say, like you said, it's it's a difficult situation. You know, I feel it all the time in hmm. terms of the fact that we have these public uh, personas and then yeah. sometimes you talk to someone and you real and you see in their eyes something which is scary, um, <laughs> you know, and so and it's dangerous. It's like you almost want like this is dangerous for me, like get away, get away. You know, you huh. want it to you almost want to push it away or sometimes you don't. You want it. You want it, you know, because it feels it, it gives you. So it's a it's a it, I think that that's like one of my biggest uh so one of my biggest fears, because I'm not a humble person. Like, it just naturally, I'm just not. <laughs> I think anybody who's watched my videos will see that sometimes it comes out like I'm not a humble person. And mm. so it's like, I, I, I anyways, I hope, mm. I just hope God will preserve me through this. Because, yeah, sometimes it's, especially like I, in the past few weeks, it's been cold. Lent is the worst. Like, Lent is the worst. Like, it, you, you can follow my Twitter feed. When you see, like, when you see me start to say certain types of things, you're like, okay, Jonathan, it's not doing well. <laughs> It's like, it's usually is this like this kind of arrogance and pride that comes out. Yes. And so, yes. Yeah.